You're going crazy during the two week wait and you can't wait for the day to take a pregnancy test. But you go to the bathroom and you see spots of blood in your underwear. Are you starting your period? Your mind starts to race and you become worried. But did you know that not all vaginal bleeding is a sign of your period? In fact, a certain type of bleeding called implantation bleeding could indicate you're pregnant. So how do you know if you're experiencing implantation bleeding or if it's your period? There are many defining characteristics of each, and I will explore all of those with you in this video. Be sure to watch until the very end so you can fully understand the difference between implantation bleeding and period bleeding. Hi, I'm Dr. Faye Schumann. Let me begin by explaining why implantation bleeding happens. To understand implantation bleeding, let's take a few steps back and look at all the events that lead to conception. When you have sexual intercourse during your fertile window, sperm has the chance to fertilize a mature egg. Typically, the egg is fertilized by the sperm in the fallopian tube to form the embryo. From here, the embryo must travel to its new home, your uterus. Once the embryo reaches the uterus, it hatches through its protective layer and prepares itself to implant. The embryo then embeds itself into your uterine wall. This is necessary so the embryo can form a connection with your blood network. Your uterine lining is full of small blood vessels and some of these blood vessels rupture during implantation. The injury to the blood vessels can cause light bleeding known as implantation bleeding. The implantation window is between 6 to 12 DPO or days post ovulation, but most commonly at days 8 to 10 DPO. This is why you usually experience implantation bleeding on 8 to 10 DPO. The bleeding only lasts for one to two days and is light pink or brown. It could be difficult for you to discern if you are experiencing implantation bleeding when you are unsure of when you ovulated. You won't know if you're around eight to 10 DPO if you don't know your ovulation day. So how do you figure out your ovulation day? A great way to do this is by tracking your menstrual cycle with the Anito Fertility Monitor. It is a comprehensive fertility monitor that provides a full picture of your reproductive hormones. Anito is the only fertility monitor that measures estrogen, LH, PDG, a urine metabolite of progesterone, and FSH on one single strip. Tracking these hormones with Anito helps you identify your fertile window and confirm ovulation. That way, you'll never have to guess when your ovulation day is. For 15% off your Anito purchase, use the code Anito x15 now that you know what implantation is and how it happens let's take a look at how it is different from your period there are many differences between implantation bleeding and your period let's break it down and look at how they differ by timing flow duration and color timing the most important difference is the timing as mentioned, implantation bleeding typically occurs around 8 to 10 DPO, although it could be as early as 6 DPO or as late as 12 DPO. Your period will usually only happen around 14 DPO. Flow. The flow of implantation bleeding is usually lighter than your period. Implantation bleeding is usually light spotting. You may notice a few droplets of blood on your undies. It's not enough to saturate a panty liner or pad. Your period, on the other hand, may start as a light flow and become heavier. Another big difference is that the implantation bleeding will not contain clots. Clots consist of blood and tissue, which is a sign that you are experiencing your period. Duration. Implantation bleeding is short-lived. Typically, you will only notice light spotting for up to two days. However, your period can last up to eight days. Color. Implantation bleeding probably won't resemble the bright red blood you usually see with your period. It is typically light pink or brown. While you may sometimes experience light pink or brown blood on the first day or so of your period, it typically changes to bright red soon after. There may be other ways to differentiate between implantation bleeding and your period. And this is by examining any current symptoms you have. You must note there are some similarities between PMS symptoms and early pregnancy symptoms, since they are both caused by a rise in progesterone, so it can get confusing. 
You can experience symptoms like nausea, bloating, mood swings, increased breast sensitivity, and back pain during your period or early pregnancy. But there are a few other symptoms that may be easier to distinguish. Firstly, cramps. If you get cramps during your period, you know they can get pretty intense and can make you want to curl up on the floor with a hot water bottle. Implantation cramps won't be this severe. They are usually described as a mild dull ache and are located in the lower abdomen. Next up is a change in your BBT or basal body temperature. You should note a decrease in your BBT around implantation, which is called the implantation dip. It's anecdotal and a not a reliable way to confirm pregnancy but I wanted to discuss it because you could experience this phenomenon. If you track your BBT, you may notice a decrease in temperature on the day of implantation. This decrease in temp only lasts for a day and then increases. This difference from when your BBT decreases around the time of your period, when you see a decrease in BBT around your period, your temperature stays low. A few more early pregnancy symptoms to look out for include food adversions, increased sense of smell, nausea and vomiting, and darkening of the areola, the tissue surrounding your nipple. You may not be experiencing implantation bleeding and wondering if you're pregnant. I'm going to cover that towards the end of the video, so keep watching to find out. But if you are experiencing implantation bleeding and you have early pregnancy symptoms, you're probably anxious to take a pregnancy test. When should you take a pregnancy test? While I wish I could tell you to run and take a pregnancy test right now, it's best to wait until after you miss your expected period to take a test. This is because you need time for HCG to build up in your system. HCG is a hormone secreted by the placenta and is the hormone that pregnancy tests look for. If you take a pregnancy test when you're experiencing implantation bleeding, you will most probably receive a negative result even if you are experiencing implantation. This is because HCG is not being produced just as yet. If you want more information on implantation and early pregnancy symptoms, check out this playlist about implantation. Now, you may be wondering, can pregnancy occur without experiencing implantation bleeding? Only about 15 to 25% of women will experience implantation bleeding. So yes, it's absolutely possible for you to receive a positive pregnancy test but never experience implantation bleeding. When to consult a doctor. Implantation bleeding should not warrant a trip to the doctor. If your bleeding is light and only lasts for up to two days, then there's nothing to be worried about. However, if you have other unusual signs, you should consult your doctor. This includes heavy flow, flow lasting for more than seven days, passing large tissue-like clots, severe back and or abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. These symptoms could actually indicate a more serious issue such as miscarriage or ectopic pregnancy. I know it can be difficult to even think about seeing drops of blood in your undies when you are trying to conceive, but I hope after this video you feel more confident in your ability to tell the difference between implantation bleeding and your period. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you want more awesome content like this, check out our Instagram page and our blog for hours of educational and entertaining content. Have fun learning and I'll see you in the next one.